This is a story you should know. It's about men like myself. My name, Pete Jensen. I'm a captain in the Air National Guard. I'm sitting in the ready room of Air National Guard base on runway alert. My problem at the moment, how to kill time. The manual doesn't cover that one, how to spend the time between an hour before sunrise and an hour after dusk. I've often asked myself why I do it. My friends have often asked me the same thing. What am I doing here when I could be playing golf? You want to know what a runway alert is, why it's important? All right, I'll tell you. Because, come to think of it, well, it concerns you, too. Where does it start? With me, it was Korea, where I first flew jets. 100 missions in a little more than a year. At least six verified kills. Some rough moments that seemed like hours. But you get over it, and so does the war. And then you come home, and if you're me, Pete Jensen, you go into your father's law firm, and you begin to do all right for yourself. You don't figure that you're going to be a senator someday or a Clarence Darrow, but you've done all right and can't help feeling that way, especially when you head for home after a busy day. You've got yourself a wife, a mute, a small son, a rip snorter, Two bath ranch house, 139 payments to go, and for the full treatment, a white fence, which needs painting. All I need is a cocker spaniel, and I'll be a real average guy. So, all's well. But then suddenly, one day, it isn't all there. Something's missing. There's an important part of you that's gone. And unconsciously, you want it back. But you're a lucky guy, Jensen, because for you, it's available again. That poster you spotted down at the Ed Callis garage, that did it. Join the Air National Guard. But why you, Jensen? Haven't you had it? At any rate, you investigate, you read the facts, you give it some solid reflection. You discuss it with Nancy, who's a pretty level-headed gal. And then, if you see it clearly, the way you did, you decide to join. Now, apparently, a lot of other people around town feel the same way you do. And you know exactly who they are. There's Ray Donahue, the assistant treasurer at the bank. Bill Pendleton, who operates a successful variety store. There's Dick Hoffman, who built a nice trucking business for himself in the last five years. Mike Jacobowski, a darn good mechanic at Ed Callis's garage. And several others just like him. And Wes Hayworth, who owns the local hardware. Out at the airbase, you describe them differently. It's Lieutenant Colonel Donahue, group commander. Captain Hoffman, Squadron Operations Officer. It's Major Pendleton, Squadron Commander. It's Sergeant Jacobowski, the best crew chief any squadron ever had. It's Sergeant Hayworth keeping his boys up on the latest radar maintenance techniques. And over there, knee-deep in M350 calibers, is young Ronnie Gillette. When you join something such as the Air Guard, you have your reasons. Take Ray Donahue, World War II vet. 48 drills, plus the flying time he puts in, adds to his income. And with three growing kids, he can use it. Bill Pendleton? Well, he likes the idea of a pension plan that will start paying off at age 60. Jacobowski? Well, he's got an idea he'd like to open his own garage in a couple of years. He couldn't begin to pay for the mechanical training he's getting in the Air Guard. 
And uh, as for young Ronnie Gillette, he's a smart one, that kid. He joined up as soon as he graduated from high school. He figures on using the Air Guard as his springboard to the Air Force Academy. And he'll probably make it. Now, that gets us to me, Pete Jensen. Well, for me, flying a jet is the greatest thrill in the world. The thing I miss so much, the thing I was so thankful to recover. Something happens to you when you climb into that cockpit, when you know that you're master of all that power, when you can make it respond to any aerial gymnastic in the book, when you're clocking 600 miles per hour and beyond. Beyond, meaning the sound barrier. Regulations say that fighter pilots in the Air National Guard must log at least 100 flying hours a year, including 20 hours on instruments and 15 hours at night to remain qualified. The guys in our squadron have little trouble meeting the requirements. And the same goes for every Air Guard unit in the USA. There's always something new, some new aerial tactic, some new piece of equipment in this jet business that requires constant awareness. It isn't just your life that's at stake. Always up there, you can't help looking down and thinking of others who must depend on you, whether they realize it or not. And one reason the Air National Guard is kept at such a high level of modernism in peacetime is because it's a vital part of our nation's defense team. And if needed, whether it's over the Atlantic or Pacific at 40,000 feet, you'll be there. So that, in essence, is why you're killing time in something called a ready room at the air base. But what's a runway alert? At Air National Guard bases all over the country, there are permanent staff members and volunteers constantly on duty. They're ready to go at a moment's notice. You can watch it now in action. Here's Bill Pendleton on duty as alert officer. At exactly 1526, civilian translation 326 in the afternoon, the phone rings on the hotline from Daisy. That's ground control intercept. Giving him the word received from one of the radar stations out at sea or on the coast. Unidentified aircraft approach. Scramble two. The unidentified plane is still 400 miles away. But that's less than an hour air time. The scramble signal puts the standby pilots into motion. The word goes to the tower. Scramble two, vector 270 degrees. Call GCI, button seven. Climb to Angels 35. and yours truly, Pete Jensen, answering the scramble, and you don't know what it is, what it means, or where it'll take you. All you know is it's a moment you've prepared for. But so well coordinated is this team that within four minutes after the scramble bell has sounded, both jet fighters are on their way to being airborne. You still don't know where you're going, but from this point on, GCI keeps you posted. Vector 285. Band at seven five miles at two o'clock. Roger. Now you find yourself streaking northeastward toward a target you haven't seen yet, and might never see if the weather should turn bad. You and Dick Hoffman think of the possibilities. The bandit could be an airliner, which is off its course, or a private plane that filed the wrong flight plan. And with its radio out, it can't report its position. Could be a surprise drill put on by the Air Defense Command to examine the efficiency of regular units as well as your guard outfit. Or it could be the real thing. A sneak attack. Turning to heading 290. Bandit now 12 o'clock and we'll be crossing from starboard to port. Well, there it is. I go over to take a look while Dick covers me in case of trouble. Turns out to be a B-25 on a test alert. 
Yes, it was only a test. But for every split second of that last pass before identity was established, those guns and rockets in your F-86 were ready. And so were you. Dick Hoffman joins up. We head back to the base after giving the B-25 boards a fancy goodbye. Major General, Chief of the Air Force Division of the National Guard Bureau in Washington, D.C. In every state and territory, there are men like Pete Jensen, J. Ray Donahue, and Sergeant Jay Kaboski, who are training in Air National Guard organizations. In some cases, as you have just seen, they are actively participating in the nation's defense. The spirit and initiative of these thousands of citizens, your friends and neighbors, and their willingness to give freely of their spare time make it possible for the Air National Guard to maintain a high degree of operational readiness. What this means is that Air National Guard organizations all over the country are constantly training, ever on guard, and ready at a moment's notice to take to the air and in the defense of your home, your community, our nation. <laughs> 